Well, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Photoshop User TV. We are the show brought to you by Kelby One, the fine makers of Photoshop User Magazine, among other things. Check it out, Corey doing his Vanna White impression there. there. Aha. Always Photoshop great. User yeah. Magazine, great magazine, part of the Kelby One subscription, so make sure you check it out. I'm Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys, and this to my right is that ruggedly handsome guy, Corey Barker. Corey, how are you doing? I'm fine, how are you? I'm pretty good. It's been a long time, you know, what has it been, 10 minutes since yeah, the last show? It's yeah, it's really been 10 minutes since the last show, because, yeah. you know, we had to take a little break, but yeah. we're yeah, back we and no we're worries. excited. Um, we are. I tell you what. Let's jump right in. Let's jump right into it. that's what people come here for. Corey, show us what you Precisely, got. Precisely, because last week we didn't really get to dive in too much because Wes, we had Wes on, and Wes ran long. No. Now, Wes had some <laughs> great information. We, we were so thrilled to have him on. But this week we're back on it, and I have, of course, got a 3D trick for you. So, I guess we get to jump right in it. I've got some text here. Now, first I've gotten this cool pano of New York. Really kind of cool. What I see here is I, I see the surface of the water. I want to be able to lay some text on here. Look at, make it look like there's some giant letters sitting on the water. So let's just type the word New York in, uh, in a new text layer. And I'm simply going to go to the 3D menu and choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. And it goes ahead and extrudes my text. Looks pretty good. I'm going to rotate it around here because my extrusion is a little thicker. And this often happens. So let's make an adjustment there. So I'm going to open up my 3D panel. Let's go under the Window menu, open up the 3D and Properties panel. You need both of these panels when you're working with 3D. All right. So I'm going to select the text item here, and let's just adjust that extrusion depth. Let's bring it down to about here. I don't want it to be too thick, so something like about there. All right. Let's do like 500. Okay. So let's reset our view here so it's back facing front. There we go, like that. And I'm just going to just nudge the text down a little bit. And you can see it's already generated a shadow based on the invisible ground plane that the text is sitting on right there. So I'm just going to add a couple elements here to make to help it uh, kind of blend into the scene here. Because I mean, it already kind of looks like it's sitting on the text right away, and that's good, which means I only have to make a few adjustments to really make it work. But I'm going to adjust the positioning here, and we'll just slide it up there a little bit. Now, I want to create, have the uh, city in the background kind of reflecting on the edges of the text. So I'm going to go over here and select the background layer itself, the original background layer. Do a Command A, which selects all, selects the entire image, and then Command C, copies it to the clipboard. We we'll jump back over to the 3D layer, and we're going to go down here in the 3D panel to the various meshes here. We're going to look for New York um, extrusion material, which is the sides of the text, that extruded area. And we go over here and set the reflection to around 30, and the shine will keep you know pretty high as well. So, well, right around the same number there. And then I'm going to go into the environment properties. Now what I want to do is create an image-based light here. So over here where it says IBL, I'm going to click on this uh, little folder icon and choose New Texture. Now Photoshop is going to remember the dimensions of the image I copied to my clipboard. So when I jump in here, you can see it's remembering those numbers. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And all I did was create the document. Now I have to go in there and choose Edit Texture, and I'm simply going to paste that image in there. We'll close it and save it, and now you can see, if I just move that reflection around, see that background element reflecting in the sides of the text. Isn't that kind of cool? All right. So with that, if I do a little bit of a render here, I can see that I'm seeing the shadows of the text, but I'm not seeing a reflection. I want to see a subtle reflection of the uh, text in the water. You would expect to see that. So again, in that environment uh, property, I'm going to jump down here to where it says ground plane, and you'll see the reflection opacity is default at zero. So I'm going to bring that up to about 50. And then the, just below that, you have the roughness. Now, if you don't touch the roughness and just leave it at zero, it treats the reflection as if it's mirroring. It's, mirror, it's going to literally mirror whatever it is reflecting. Roughness just adds a little bit of grain to it. So it kind of, um, since we're reflecting in water here, we want it to be kind of fading as it fades down. So see how it's got that little bit of a fade to it as I do a render? So now it's kind of blending in there. It looks like it's sitting on the text and everything like that, and that looks pretty good. And I won't go ahead and go through the whole render just for the sake of time. But one last element I wanted to add to this. I'm thinking it looks good, but you would expect some of this light to be kind of like pouring through there. So here's what I'm going to do. Add a quick new layer. We'll get a brush. And I've got a vast collection of brushes here. But uh, what I'm looking for is these flare brushes I created. And I want to get this one right here. Uh, so it's got that kind of flare. 
But let's set the foreground color to white. I'm just going to enhance this light here in between the W and just click in that layer right there. And it brings that light. It kind of helps wrap that light around the element. If you wanted to add even more to it, make a new layer and just put a little bit of a gradient right there to enhance it a little bit more. And we'll drop the opacity there a little bit. So it's really just enhancing that brightness coming through there. It's probably too much. Let's bring it down a little bit more. So, But there we can see in just a few short minutes, we've got realistic text sitting on that 3D plane. And if you add a few, and this is something I learned from, from Tomasz Opazinski, the poster designer, is that these subtle little gradients and little flares really add that kind of atmospheric element to it to help blend well, it, them in. It better. helps settle it mm. into the environment. Precisely. And that's what you're trying to do is trying to take all the 2D mm. and cram it in there and make it look mm. 3D. And so that flare coming around kind mm. of settles it and anchors it in a space. Absolutely. Yeah, so it really that's helps really great. It blend nicely. So. There you have it. So playing around with 3D in Photoshop, try it out. Hope you have fun. So. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, I tell you what, we're going to take a quick break. Corey, you got me clapping now. <laughs> we're just going to be the clapping The Conan clap is going. Yeah, so. so anyway, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I've got a tutorial for you, and we've got some other great stuff for you. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Cool. <laughs> Hi everyone, we are back at Photoshop User TV, and coming up right now is Mr. Pete Collins. He's got some pretty cool stuff I'm seeing on the screen, so I'm, uh, I'm love, I'm love, I love it, this thing he does on, on the site, so please go on. All right, well one of the things that I do here with Kelpie One is I run the uh, member side of things, and I have this thing called the Pixel Fight Club that goes on every Monday. I have a new image that I post for anybody that's a member of Kelby One to come over and take that image and do whatever they want with it. And then the next Monday, I give them a new image, but I also judge who I think had the best image of the week. And I usually give a video review of everybody that put stuff in there. And so this was uh, last week on, uh, on Kelby One, if you go over there to the member side, this is the image that I gave them, and I've got all the rules here. But then here are some of the, uh, some of the uh, folks have put up some different images here, just playing around with it. And so I decided to jump into this one as well. And so what I did is I came over and took my own image, there it is right there, and I started playing with it. And so I uh, cut out the emblem, because the emblem's just so nice, it's from an old, uh, old truck, and I love this emblem. Mm -hmm. And then I started cleaning it up, and I got it to that point, and thought that looks pretty good, but then I took it another step further, and I really kind of almost made it, uh, using the mixer brush, I really kind of polished it up so mm -hmm. that it got rid of all the little, uh, dents and stuff over there. I, I kind of went back and forth about what I was going to do with this. Mm -hmm. And that's some of the fun of this. This is one of the reasons why I love this kind of project and challenge because there's no real pressure. It's just fun and creativity. And if you find yourself asking these questions over and over again, what if I dot, dot, dot. And those are, those are the times when playing really leads to learning and, and figuring out new things. And, and in a, in a non-threatening environment like this, it's really fun to figure some stuff out. And so what happened is I then brought that emblem, once I got it to that point, over and created, uh, started playing with it. I cut out sections of it, uh, and then I started adding different things to it. I said, well, what happens if I cut off just that section there and start playing with it, or I cut off that part and play with it? Well, this is when I got into playing with the different features in Photoshop and decided, hey, let's see what will happen if I take and maybe just use the warp tool. And I got this kind of look to it. And then I came in and added a little bit of that, and it starts to look like some sort of insignia or whatever. And I automatically start thinking a space theme or maybe a military theme, something Star Trek or whatever. And then I do the same thing over here, and I just take and distorted it as the planes fly overhead. <laughs> I distorted it this way, starts to look like a robotic butterfly, and it gets me thinking in another direction. And so I just want to show you, once you get an object, let Photoshop sometimes give you that creative jolt to go in a certain direction, because I didn't know where I was going with this. I just simply came in and went, 
Command T, Control T, depending on PC or Mac. And then I just right clicked and I said, well, let's try, you know, let's try warp and start to see what kind of looks I can get if I start playing with this. Let's uh, control Z, let's grab it from up here. And it just starts to give you different looks that might go, oh, that reminds me of this or that or the other. And, and it just gives you kind of that jumping off place of where you're gonna create some sort of new image. So here you go, these are where I, I kind of went. I went, I decided maybe something there. Uh, or then I came along and I started getting into this point here where I cut out strips of it. And then once I did that, I said, well, let me start playing with the individual parts of that as well. I got to here and I really went back with these two little sides here, the wings, and I warped them again. And that's where this came about. These are just simply, if you notice, let's get back to here. If I'm here and then I start warping with the warp tool, those extra little parts, and this is where I got simply by playing around with warp. And I immediately started thinking, boy, that kind of looks like a robot. And so then, of course, a robot needs a good eye in there. Then you've got to add tentacles. You then use the, the tip that I used last week on Photoshop User TV to create a different type of look to the style of those tentacles. And then when you're finally done, you get a robot creature, something like that. Okay, and so then once I had the robot, I had to put him in an environment and start playing with it. And this was the final image that I came up with, incorporating the robot, of course, into a tragic, you know, death scene where he's chasing guys and all that <coughs> stuff. And all this simply came about with me starting to play with that original image. And that's one of the reasons why I really want to promote getting in there and playing, because I learned some things about what I, I had never thought about before mm. using Photoshop. It, it really got me thinking in some different directions. And the whole, whole thing is, is even if this image was a big bomb, a big stink bomb at the end of the time, I learned some new stuff here, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be creative in an environment where it's not so pressure filled. You don't want to be playing like this when you've got a deadline, mm. but you do want to be playing like this when it can spur the imagination and get you thinking in new and exciting directions. Well, and that's why the, the Fight Club is such a great idea because it's a little friendly competition. You know, you feel. I mean, it's a little bit of competitiveness that makes you push to the next level and everything like that. So a little friendly competition sir, and seeing what other people might do with the same idea well, is a good Well, thing. and that's the part that I really like is because everybody's going to have a different take on it and suddenly mm. go, ooh, I never thought about right. that. But the next week you're thinking, hey, I remember he went this direction. What mm. if I try to go in this direction? Right. And, and we really do need to be a community that One idea leads to other. another. And yeah. it isn't always your own ideas that leads to another. It's somebody else's idea. You might say, oh, I didn't think of that. Let me try that or try a variation of that or something like that. So, so if you remember stuff. Kevin One, make sure you come over there and check it out and join us. Every Monday I have a new one up there for you. Come join us. No pain, all gain. Awesome stuff. There you have it. Pete Collins, Pixel Fight Club. All right, we're going to wrap things up here. We're going to talk about a few things. We have another Peach Pit ebook deal. And if you remember last week, it's nope. over here. I've got it right here. This is the iPad book, or the iPad for photographers. Master the newest tool in your camera bag, right there. How do, you use, how do you use your iPad as a great accessory for your photography? Precisely, right there. So you can go to peachpit.com slash kelby1 and use the, the coupon code kelby1. And you'll get that very sassy ebook. Another thing, there's my coding clap again. It, <laughs> it, it worked itself in. Um, we are just, uh, you have about a week, just a little over a week uh, from, the, from today to save $100 on the registration, the full conference registration for Photoshop World in Las Vegas. It's uh, September 3rd. The, um, right here on my screen, you can see that you have until August 5th to save $100. It's a little over $100, actually on that full conference pass. So if you are planning on going, you want to save a little money and have that money for the tables when you're actually in Vegas, by all means, go and register So now. pause <laughs> this right now, go sign up, come back, let's go. There you have it. All right, and uh, lastly we have another giveaway, of course. Pete's got the book over here, what do we have? The big honking book from this guy called Scott Kelby. I, he's kind of a new and upcomer in yeah, this field, but, but he's got some good stuff. If nothing mm -hmm. else, it's worth it for the, the amount of pages in the book. But yes. this is the Adobe Photoshop book for digital photographers. And uh, just a great book. Kid's got uh, skills. Yep, got he, skills, yeah. he's got promise. So, <laughs> so make sure you check it out. Corey, how do they, they, how do well, they sign up for this? They will, of course, go to um, 
Yeah, blank that was like <laughs> kelbyone.com slash contest. As you can see right there, you'll go ahead and select Photoshop User TV in the menu, put your name, email, and give us a comment, a joke. Actually, remember the joke thing I talked yeah. about? Yeah. I actually got a handful of jokes that people sent me. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. But just submitting your name is enough for you to qualify for a chance to win that very cool book there. And I believe that is all. Is that all? I think that's Did we go it. down the list? Everything good? All right, so we if not, we'll find out, and you'll notice there'll be a little addendum at the end of this. Precisely. <laughs> It'll be in a PF, PDF download. So, <laughs> Thank you guys again for joining us here on Photoshop User TV. On behalf of myself and Mr. Pete Collins, Pixel Fight Club champion and author, all those great things. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>